Hi, this is Salma Lalana in Manos Brilakis, and this is case 195 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case in which two CTOs were recanalized in the same vessel in the same procedure. The patient had previous coronary bypass 10 years prior with lima to LAD, vein graft to the right that he had occluded, and a sequential vein graft to the ramus and the first obtuse marginal branch. And about a year prior, the patient had undergone PCI of the sequential SVG. He now presented with a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, coronary angiography, so CT of the proximal circumflex, CT of the proximal LAD, their previous stents. There is patent RCA with previous stents as well. There is a patent Lima to LAD. And this is the culprit lesion. That's the sequential SVG to the ramus and to the first obtuse marginal branch. The previously placed stents are in that skip segment of the graft. And the culprit lesion is just proximal to the previous stents at the touchdown of the sequential SVG down to the ramus branch. The concern with performing PCI of this SVG lesion in the SVG is that it could potentially compromise flow into the ramus branch. And that is why there was a discussion with the referring physician as well as the patient. The patient was taken off the table and eventually a decision was made that uh, a recanalization attempt would be made for the native coronary artery. If it failed, then we would try to stand the SVG. This is the dual injection illustrating the anatomy. Again, vein graft going to the ramus and OM1. We do have uh, a CTO in the proximal circumflex. There are previous stents there, and there are previous stents into the ramus branch as well. So two CTO lesions and multiple previous stents, ramus, circumflex, and first obtuse marginal branch. Regarding the anatomy of the ramus CTO, ambiguous proximal cap. There is a little entry point, but it's unclear where this is going. Previous stent, length about 30 millimeters, distal vessel is good size, fills from the vein graft. So the plan for this was to go retrograde through the SVG, and if that didn't work, go undergrade or ADR. And then regarding the OM CTO, which was more challenging, this was a much longer CTO, once again with ambiguous proximal cap, but there are some stents in the proximal circumflex and the OM1. The distal vessel is good quality, filling through the SVG. However, there may be a little bit of backwards filling, and that portion of the vessel seems to be diffusely diseased. So in this case, because we did have the previous stents, our plan was to start with undergrade wiring attempts. If that didn't work, try to go retrograde. But the problem with retrograde is that the angulation was extreme. So we thought that it would be very hard to advance a guide wire and microcatheter retrograde into the obtuse marginal branch. So we tried to cross undergrade, Corsair, Gaia X2. We did make some progress. We seem to be moving along the course of the previous stand. We did make some more progress. Now we are trying to get into the obtuse marginal stand. This is a circumflex stand. This is the obtuse marginal stand. We switched to a polymer jacketed wire that seemed to advance a little bit further. And then uh, uh, we had difficulty advancing the microcatheter through the first stand into the obtuse marginal stand and eventually trying attempts to advance we actually lost both the wire and the guide position so we started again we did use a different guide catheter initially we had a, a, a smaller guide and we used an EBU4 that provided much better support and then a guy next wire then we increased uh, the penetrating power with a Hornet 14 that advanced uh, once again inside the previous stand and then we used the sapphire balloon to try to predilate. We also used a trap liner guide extension that was advanced into the proximal circumflex and then changed from the Hornet into a polymer jacketed Gladius Mongo that seems to be advancing along the course of the vessel. And now the anatomy becomes much more clear because this is the obtuse marginal branch. There is tenting of the native vessel from the bypass graft and there's a bifurcation actually so our guide wire the undergrade wire is going distally but we want to go into the superior branch not into the inferior branch of the obtuse marginal branch we did multiple attempts to advance an undergrade wire into the 
um, distal portion of the OM1, but unfortunately the angulation was extreme and could not advance the guide wire. We also tried to advance the guide wire retrograde. This is a Sasuke dual Louis microcatheter. And we tried with the Sion Black to go backwards, but once again we had a lot of difficulty uh, navigating through this uh, extreme angulation. So what can we do? We are very close, but the angulation is such that we cannot advance either an undergrade wire or a retrograde wire into this portion of the vessel. And uh, what we ended up devising is a plan in which we advanced and snare. This is a two millimeter gooseneck snare that was advanced undergradely into this little inferior branch of the first obtuse marginal. Then we advanced the undergrade wire through that snare and then we tighten the wire and we're able to snare it and bring it back. So that was a creative solution to this problem of angulation, getting a snare, snare the wire, bring it back. This way we were able to navigate through the angulation and then we eventually externalized that wire and then we brought uh, the Sasuke dual lumen microcaster undergrade and did probing and eventually we were able to advance an undergrade wire into the distal obtuse marginal branch. So that was an interesting case in which again first retrograde and then undergrade with dual lumen being able to wire into the distal vessel. We ballooned the obtuse marginal branch. It was not easy crossing through this area of the anastomosis, but we were able to do that eventually after multiple predilations. We then placed the stent, but now before we stand it into the left main, we wanted to first recanalize the ramus CTO because there was a bifurcation at the proximal cap of both CTOs. As we had planned before, we started with the primary retrograde approach. We were able to advance the retrograde guide wire through the ramus and then get the microcatheter to follow. But then, despite using multiple wires, including Gaia X2 and Horder 14, we were not able to cross through the previously placed stand. We had a lot of resistance inside the previous stand. We did more undergrade imaging and now we thought maybe we understand the proximal cap a little bit better. So we did an undergrade attempt using a Gaia X2 and Enterpying and actually the guide wire did cross into the previously placed Ramus stand, which actually helped us with um, clarify the ambiguity. And then we were able to advance it into the distal true lumen. So this is an example where we started retrograde, but retrospectively, maybe we should have tried undergrade first because we did have a stand that could help with resolving the proximal cap ambiguity. We then switched this guide wire into the Ramus for a workhorse guide wire ballooned both vessels and now we have some flow going in both directions. It is a complex bifurcation, so we decided to use the DK crust technique. We first made sure that there was good expansion of the balloon in both of the branches and then did the DK crust. Uh, we did use a 3.0 by 48 millimeter stand uh, into the uh, obtuse marginal and then uh, uh, into the L into the ramus and then a 3.5 by 38 into the obtuse marginal branch and uh, this provided um, a nice result we do have excellent timothy flow both into the om as well as the ramus branch there's still quite some competitive flow through the graft which says we know it can be a problem we made sure that we had a nice result so we did intravascular ultrasound that did demonstrate good stand expansion strata position all the way to the aorta and then because of the competitive flow, we decided to occlude the saphenous vein graft using an eight millimeter AVP2, which um, uh, helped uh, reduce the undergrade flow. And now we have uh, flow going through the ramus and the OM through the left main. This provided a nice result and the patient had a nice recovery. It was a long case. It took a lot of fluoroscopy time and contrast volume, but also provide us multiple lessons. The first one is that uh, the stents can help resolve proximal cap ambiguity. In this case, we did have stents both into the OM1 and the circumflex, and using those stents as a target helped us advance guide wires undergrade in both directions and recanalize this very complex CTOs. Second, orthogonal views are key for making sure we're going in the right direction, especially in the circumflex that often has significant tortuosity. Third lesson is the use of snaring. One of the challenges of this case was that uh, we could not navigate 
through the native OM into the more distal OM because the vessel was tented from the saphenous vein graft. What we ended up doing is deliver a snare through the saphenous vein graft and then advance the undergrade wire into the snare and then pull the snare back that helped us go through this bend, externalize the wire, use a dual lumen microcatheter to advance another guide wire to the distal vessel. The externalization system did provide us very strong support for equipment delivery. And then because we had a bifurcation of the proximal cap of both CTOs, we did use a two-stand technique. We did use DK cross, but a lot could have been used as well. And we got a nice result with Timothy flow in both vessels. Finally, we occluded the saphenous vein graft. This remains somewhat controversial, but there is concern if there is significant competitive flow through the saphenous vein graft that uh, this might predispose to stent thrombosis because of the competitive flow and that's why it was closed in our case. Thank you.